Kyle, Congressman Adam Kinziger of Illinois. Good to have you. So, Adam, I was uh, thinking about you yesterday as the president, uh, ex-president, the losing president, was calling out his enemies list. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, I'm reminded what my mother said. My mother was very tough. The Clark women were tough. Oh, yeah. And my mom said, Joey, judge yourself by the people who hate you. And I said, I don't know if I'll do that, Ma. But I was thinking about you and uh, Donald Trump's putting you on his enemies list. I think for a lot of people, uh, that should be a badge of honor. Well, it is. I mean, look, I'd, I'd rather be on the enemies list of a losing choke artist, you know, who failed to win an election uh, that, frankly, had he just, I think, managed even halfway decently anything, since he was an incumbent, he probably could have won, but he did everything he could to blow it, and then now has to blame everybody else. So not a bad enemies list to be on, and quite honestly, I think, you know, what you could see at that speech yesterday was recycling old talking points, uh, you know, just stream of consciousness. And I think it's obvious there is no vision from Donald Trump. There's no desire to paint a vision all he really desires is to stand in front of a crowd and be adored, and he got that in ample amounts yesterday. But I don't think that shows any that he's really going to be any serious, at least growing force going forward. Yeah, you know, so uh, so Congressman, we were. Um, I, I spent a lot of my day yesterday on the phone with Republicans. Republicans I served with in Congress back in the 90s and the early 2000s. People that uh, I worked with in my office. And I just kept asking, was this our party? Was this our, you know, what, how, have, have we been, as the Republican Party, been this bad for this long? And got a lot of different answers. I'm curious what your thoughts were yesterday uh, looking at uh, your party uh, and looking at, uh, looking at the, what happened at CPAC over the weekend. Where is the Republican Party right now? What's its future in America? I mean, you look at, you know, wheeling the gold statue of Trump in, and everybody kind of jokes about that, but the symbolism is so incredible, it's perfect. And then I've even seen pictures of people worshiping the golden Trump statue, thinking they're being funny. But, you know, and then, of course, he comes in and speaks, and I had tweeted just before the speech, expect nothing but fear permeated through this speech. And so if you think about, you know, in history, all these great American leaders that have talked about there's nothing to fear but fear itself or overcoming fear and, and, and rallying people to strength. This president has done nothing but re reflect people's darkness back to them, reflect their fears back to them. And uh, and I was, you know, it's sad, but I, I tell you, so I put out a video. It's on countryfirst.com, 1ST, and it's called No Fear. And the point of this is to say, you know, look, we have to disinfect fear from not just our political narrative, uh, but we have to disinfect it from ourselves. We can't, It's the greatest enemy to the United States. You know, China's a competitor. Yeah, the biggest enemy is fear in our hearts. He just stood up and reflected that. It was sad, but I'm still hopeful that, you know, 45 percent people at this Trump rally didn't want Donald Trump again. And I think there's a growing uh, number of people out there that see he's a has-been. Yeah, very, uh, very tapped into uh, the emotion of fear is anger, uh, and I think they were tapping into that uh, as well. Let's bring into the conversation Republican strategist and an MSNBC political analyst, Susan Del Percio. Susan, did you hear anything at CPAC that uh, condemned the violence on January 6th or tried to stop future violence? And by the way, you can take the next question to Congressman Kingsinger. No, I certainly did not, Mika. What I heard is actually people praising what happened on January the 6th, showing a, a party that is just unrecognizable to myself, and I'm sure to the congressman as well. Your congressman, you mentioned the issue of fear. And I was thinking back in 2017, Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan really didn't understand Donald Trump. And they almost acted from fear in pushing back against him because they didn't know what he was going to do next to him. So not standing up to Donald Trump proved to be disastrous for the party and, frankly, for a legislative agenda. But I'm curious now with your new uh, video that you have out there and putting country first, how do you stand up to Donald Trump and show no fear? Is it through things like supporting your other Republican uh, Congress members who stood up to Donald Trump and voted to impeach him. Uh, can you just elaborate a little bit on standing up to fear? 
Yeah, I think standing up to fear is just uh, truth telling, right? It's 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 explaining how you're being manipulated. So the fact that you look at that speech, and if you'd have seen my video prior and then seen the speech, you would know that Donald Trump is using fear. That's what we're talking about. So I think it's important. The way to show no fear is just to tell the truth. Look, Donald Trump is a con artist now that's trying to simply use your fears and darkness to feed his ego. That's what he wants to do. The Republican Party has lost its way. This is not the Republican Party that I joined and you joined, uh, but this is a Republican Party that can get back to it. And by the way, just telling the truth and standing alone in a crowd uh, can show no fear. So I think the bottom line is, look, I mean, yesterday at this speech, it was peppered with, I, I'm going to win a third time the election. So continued lies. And by the way, most of the people in that room probably know in their heart it wasn't stolen. So no fear is just admitting that it wasn't stolen and not going along with the dark crowd because it feels good at the time. You know, I'm slightly going to disagree with you on going back to the Republican Party that we joined. I don't want that Republican Party. I want a more inclusive Republican Party. I want a Republican Party that stands up for women, for people of color. And right now, most of all, that stands up for democracy, most specifically ending voter suppression efforts. And I know you have a, a nonprofit that you're working with um, to build a grassroots army. And I'm wondering if you're focused on that, because I think unless we get back to the fundamental of having a strong democracy, everything else is just not worth a hell of beans. Yeah, I think the bottom line is, you know, as the times adjust, of course, the Republican Party has to change and adjust. There's no doubt. And there's going to be issues that the Republican Party didn't advocate for that it needs to. Same with the Democrats. Everybody's going to have to change with the 21st century. And we certainly have to a lot. Uh, but when I say kind of returning to what the party was, it was more I can remember the days when presidents would stand up and say words of inspiration. And after difficult times, they'd stand up and, and say unifying things. So, yeah, a 21st century approach, but understanding that a Republican Party's job. Look, by the way, I've been a Republican far longer than Donald Trump has, and I'll be a Republican far after him. And so that's why it's incumbent on me to say, you're not going to hijack my party, you rhino. We're going to win it back and uh, and go and, and at least be a competing member of a government that typically has two parties that needs two healthy parties. Yeah. So uh, how is the battle going inside the Republican caucus? Uh, obviously, uh, Liz Cheney and, uh, and Kevin McCarthy are at odds there. Very interesting. Uh, Kevin McCarthy uh, still still in Donald Trump's good stead, despite on the House floor, uh, uh, McCarthy said that Trump bore responsibility for what happened on January the 6th. How's that battle going inside your own Republican caucus? I mean, look, I think it's still exactly where we've been. First off, nobody survives being a friend with Donald Trump, by the way. So you may as well just get it over with now um, and, and keep your integrity intact. Um, but the, I think it's everybody wants to talk about unity in the Republican Party. There isn't. Right. And that we're going to pretend like there's unity and there is some unity in opposing certain things. But that's not a unified party just because you're opposed to something. Um, and that's why I think that there needs to be this real public discussion. As Ronald Reagan said, there's a time for choosing. This is a time for choosing. Are you a country first Republican or are you a Donald Trump first Republican? And, you know, somebody like Liz Cheney with real courage, I mean, can stand in front and know she's going to take some hits from the Freedom Club and, you know, and people that go out and act like they're defending the Constitution and they're doing quite the opposite of it. And they're cancel culture and Liz Cheney. But she has shown her ability to stand up and be strong in this. And, and quite honestly, I do think, I do, maybe I'm too much of an optimist, but every day that goes by, Donald Trump will become less and less relevant. And that's why we have to have this competing vision, because in the absence of Donald Trump's relevance, something's got to fill that. And I certainly hope it's what I'm thinking about with Country First. Yeah, Congressman Adam Kinziger, thank you very much. Susan Del Percio, thank you for your insight. As